Hey guys, uh, welcome back to my show. My name is AK Rex, and I am here with my uh, uh, trusted moderator and a friend as well, uh, Ignis. Uh, how are you, Ignis? Hey man, I'm doing well. How are you? Uh, yeah, doing good as well, baby. All good. Yeah, so glad uh, to be here. Yeah, thank you, thank you. I'm very happy that you're happy. Yeah, everybody happy. Yeah, no crying. Yeah? Happy. <laughs> yeah, nothing but love. So. The reason we are here is because we uh, still have time before the month is over and this is a, an African and Caribbean history month, right? So yeah. uh, we're gonna be talking about some creatures and a few things about it, uh, basically just whatever is relevant and whatever Eden specifically wants to uh, talk about. Uh, and. Uh, We'll just see where it goes and hope you will enjoy it. And if you feel like we left something out, we will hopefully find time of our jobs and real life responsibilities and give you another yeah. recording. So, yeah, you know, just let us know in the comments and we'll look into it. Exactly, exactly. So, uh, and uh, it also happens, even that you are also of a Caribbean descent, are you not? Yeah, exactly. So, uh, my uh, family, they are uh, originally from Curacao, which is a island uh, off of the coast of Venezuela. In the Caribbean uh, Sea. It's a very small island and not many people know of it. Uh, many people have heard of Aruba and Aruba is right next to uh, Curacao and along with Bonaire. It's a very interesting island. Uh, if we're gonna talk about it uh, paleontological wise, uh, there's not much there because it was uh, it only emerged around 70 million years ago, so around late Cretaceous. So you probably won't be finding any dinosaurs there. Maybe mammals, but none that I know of unfortunately. Yeah, we would probably need a very large population of some kind so that we can at least find yeah. just a few pieces, you know, only. Exactly, exactly. There have been rumors of capybara being found on the island, but uh, I'm not sure if there's any truth to that. Uh, but who knows, maybe I'll look into it one day and I'll, uh, I'll bring it up. That would be great. And speaking of, you mentioned Aruba. I actually remember back in the days when uh, um, I was still in my high school and my whole family uh, and it was dad's idea to decide, you know what, let's go on a cruise in Caribbean islands. So, I oh. have, yeah, I've been to Aruba. I've you been have? To, yep. Nice. Uh, I've been to Grenada, Dominica, and uh, St. Thomas, and also uh, not exactly an island, but Venezuela as well. Yeah. So you have been around Curacao then, especially Aruba. That's like... Uh... 20 minutes by plane <laughs> yep. from Curacao. Well, the reason I also know about Curacao is because when I worked as a bartender, there were a lot of drinks that originated yep. yeah. in, from Caribbeans, and Blue Curacao is actually Blue one Curacao. of them. Yeah. Yep. So I made a lot of cocktails from Blue Cru with Blue Curacao, and that's how I know about it as well. Oh, that's awesome. So, and of course, uh, been to Bahamas, and uh, Bahama Mama is quite nice, as long as somebody who knows how to make it does it properly. <laughs> 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 so, I think maybe a good way to do this and to start celebrating the Caribbean and African History Month is to start maybe with some uh, overview on the Caribbean creatures. So what you see on the yeah. screen is something we will talk about later. So right now I wanted to switch uh, to this creature, which I... Oh my god, help me to pronounce this name. Uh, it's uh, Petso Petso Siren. Oh, uh, Siren. Petso Siren. Yeah, there we go. Petso Siren. Yes, yeah. it's um, the one. Yeah, yeah. There we go. There we go. My man. And uh, <laughs> this one is from uh, Jamaica. Jamaica. Yeah. Fifty million years ago. Do you have yeah, anything to uh, tell us about this? This early Eocene. 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 Uh, I don't know too much about it. I know, uh, like, looking at it, it seems to be from the order Siren Sirenia. Uh, which is uh, closely related to elephants. So I thought that was uh, instantly picked up on that. Um, but I don't know much about this guy, and I think it's very cool that you uh, picked this one out because uh, it's from Jamaica as well. And it's nice to know that there's uh, interesting mammals such as this uh, in the Caribbean. Uh, but yeah, it, it, it's uh, it's a very funky looking animal. <laughs> it looks kind of like a a hippo, but I do see why it's in the uh, family Sirenia. You know uh, what I'm tempted to think here, and of course this is gonna be a very, very uh, broad and rough and blunt, uh, just find other appropriate adjectives uh, that describe this assumption, but mm -hmm. if you look at the 
uh, image, right? Where it has the anatomy shots, like in the red and... Uh, yeah, 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 I got that one up right now. And there is a facial close-up of it. Mm -hmm. um, the face looks like, well, um, this guy has been, well, stoned, if you will. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry, but it looks like he's stoned. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I'm almost the, tempted to think that the the, the, the one who drew, drew this, uh, and shout out to Roman as well, he's a very talented artist, I love yeah, his yeah, work. So me his and, work as well. Yeah, me and uh, Harry also praised him on our stream, so we're not dunking on Roman, but I think Roman... No, 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 like I think it's cool what he does, because uh, not many artists can uh, do what he does, uh, photo bashing like this, I think that's very well done. Uh, so I agree, yeah. And also, it's funny that I almost almost tempted to think that he was trying to just very very low key troll people to see if they will notice something, but um, <laughs> uh, yeah, but uh, maybe it was not intentional. More maybe, likely, it was maybe not. not. <laughs> maybe maybe not. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, post your comments down below, guys. What you think? Do you think Roman was trying to troll us with this one to see if we're gonna notice? Because I only just noticed it because when me and Ines were discussing the content before we started recording. I didn't notice this, so it kind of came up. <laughs> Do you think? Who, he hey, was, who knows? Uh... Who knows? If you wanna, like, if you wanna dive into it, maybe he's onto something. Maybe Jamaica itself has something to it that makes uh, mammals uh, appear this way. You never know. Yeah. Oh my God, Ines! How could you say that? You just made a very broad assumption about Jamaica. I'm, oh, no. I'm, ju I'm just saying. I'm just speculating. <laughs> speculating. I'm just speculating. You know? yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like it's like it's almost like you know, theorizing and speculating is forbidden. Yeah, you cannot yeah. you cannot say that in 2021 <laughs> no, anymore. No, <laughs> but uh, anyway, it's uh, it's Caribbean it is, and uh, African yeah. History Month. You can say whatever you want, right? <laughs> <laughs> But, you know, of course, props to a Roman for this. I think it's very interesting. And, of course, uh, props that it's a obscure species as well, obscure genius. Uh, I'm not sure if it's the only species. Um, I've been I've been reading a bit about it, and uh, it seems to be the uh, first or only uh, quadrupedal uh, Cyrenian. Uh, you think it's cool. And one thing I noticed in the uh, skull is how high the uh, nostrils are placed. Uh, yeah. It's also a trait seen in the... Uh, in elephants and uh, other uh, Cyrenian creatures. So, uh, again, that links the uh, two groups together. I think that's really interesting to, to see. Yeah, I would say on a serious note, I'm really uh, glad that he does uh, cover some creatures, at least, that are very much obscure. And uh, yeah. he actually yeah, tries to make a good attempt at reconstructing them, even based on the very limited uh, availability of evidence. And... Uh, um, I mean, uh, obviously mammals is not my field of expertise, but I haven't really noticed him going a little bit over the top crazy with anything this far. Yeah. I, I've seen him, like, redo his woolly mammoth, I think. I think he's changed that one up uh, in a few, few times. Uh, there were times, like, I think there was one time where he made one, and I was like, ah, this, I, I, I'm not a fan of this. But there wasn't, like, anything crazy about it. It's just it looked odd to me. But uh, mm. I think he ended up redoing it at some point, and I was like, okay, this actually looks better. And e if not, then I have very little to uh, anything to say about the uh, rest of his Proboscideans. So, uh, yeah. You know what I wanted to bring to attention before I obviously forget, since we are already um, uh, going and ticking off our list of uh, creatures. The reason um, there you might you might find, uh, well, obviously, when you're watching this video, as a disclaimer, that we're not going to be covering the. Mesozoic uh, stuff like uh, yeah. Spinosaurus, Carcharodontosaurus, Suchomimus, Nigersaurus, Oranosaurus, Sarcosuchus. Yeah. We all know, you know about those guys. Uh, yeah, I think that if we are going to ever... Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I was going to say, I dare not touch Spinosaurus. <laughs> like, we're going to say something today and tomorrow it's going to change again, so... Uh, <laughs> I'm just going to give us an that. excuse maybe to make more videos, but that means we also ah. have to find more time of our... Yeah jobs and daily hey, life to squeeze ever, it in. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, hey, if you're ever up for it, I'm down for a Spinosaurus video. I think it would be an interesting one. Yeah. Do we get Jeffrey on as well? Or do you think ah, it's going to take four hours? <laughs> <laughs> if you get Jeffrey on, uh, you might have to grab some snacks as well. And, uh, some I'd probably have to, you yeah. know, grab like a whole teapot, to be honest. Like, I've got a yeah. timer here anyway, but... Uh, it might we're not gonna... be enough. I might have to run downstairs <laughs> a couple times. <laughs> yeah, no, most likely. We'd definitely be there for a while. 
Okay, well, I mean, uh, this is basically the reason, guys. We are going to be sticking to the ones that are, let's just say, less uh, uh, known and lesser known yeah. and lesser prominent ones in comparison mm -hmm. to the well-known dinosaurs. But if you want to, uh, you know, do a follow-up to this video, regardless of whether we will be able to make it before the October is over, and that's going to be over in 11 days. Two days now, like, yeah. yeah, 11 days. Well, 11 technically, yeah, but uh, 10 days if we are going to be realistic, because, yeah. you know... We're not going to be able to get enough uh, comments and feedback. Uh, people saying, "Quick, quick, make one, make one, make one!" You know, before <laughs> the month is over, right? So, but yes, if yeah. um, if we're going to be able to make a last-minute follow-up to continue celebrating the Caribbean and African History mm -hmm. Month, then uh, we can still do a late one in November yeah, anyway. Exactly. Exactly. So, uh, yeah. Um, one thing I want to say, like uh, the ones watching this may have noticed, both me and Arsene, we don't really know too much about uh, Peso Siren. Uh, I'm guessing that's how you pronounce it. Um, uh, that that may be a call to arms here. So uh, someone in the comments may know a bit more about this uh, specific animal and let us know more about it because I'm quite interested and fascinated by this animal. Um, I think the name Peso Siren, I think Peso means uh, something heavy, like to weigh, uh, uh, hefty. And of course Siren, this is from a Cyrenian group. So I'm, I'm guessing the name refers to this to a hefty siren uh, reading the description of this guy it was uh, it said that the bones were quite robust and this being a quadrupedal siridian uh, of like 150 kgs may not seem like a lot but uh, I think by the Eocene this was uh, a l rather uh, large siridian so yeah I'm by guessing... the Eocene standards it would probably yeah exactly something. so I'm guessing peso siren uh, refers to its heftiness but someone please correct me if I'm wrong. Maybe it was named after the formation or uh, uh, someone. Um, but yeah, in in, uh, in short, if if anyone knows more about this animal, please let us know. And um, I wanted to add as well that um, feel free to pause this screen at any time uh, when we go over this. If you want to read, you know, the details so that we don't have yeah. to obviously drag out the video for too long. So feel free to pause it any moment now. Now you can unpause it and continue <laughs> either watching or listening, depending on what you're doing. If you are yeah. driving, however, do not uh, look just, at the just screen. Keep it, keep it paused or you know, listen and don't look. <laughs> Eyes yeah. on the road. Eyes on the road, yes. Find a safe place to stop, like a drive through of some kind, grab a burger <laughs> and a drink. Yeah, grab something to eat and drink and listen to us talk, you know? Yes. That, that sounds like fun. Yeah, sounds like fun to me. I'm I'm definitely enjoying it, sitting in my um, comfortable armchairs, uh, you know, yeah, drinking likewise. my Japanese green tea from the <laughs> bottle. <laughs> so, <laughs> right. So, um, I think. Uh, do you have anything else to say about this uh, critter? Uh, no, no, unfortunately not. But uh, it's very interesting, and I hope someone in the comments will uh, inform us a bit more about this guy. Okay, cool. In this case, uh, I uh, would say let's move on to the next creature, and I would go for Megalochnus. Um, ah, yes. Let's okay. have a look at this one. Something a bit more familiar to us. Uh, yes. We all know ground sloths now, and they come in literally all shapes and sizes. They're very interesting. Uh, and uh, the Caribbean was uh, no stranger to ground sloths either. There were many uh, uh, genre of ground sloths living in the Caribbean. And Megalochnus was no different. This one's from Cuba, I believe. Yep. Yeah, Cuba. Um, and down further in South America, you have other ground sloths that uh, were even semi-aquatic, but that's a topic for another time. Um, but it's cool. It's cool. Like, maybe these guys also swam to the Caribbean. Uh, as far as I know, there's not much known about these Caribbean ground sloths. Um, so maybe there's an opportunity there for people to look into it. Uh, I wanted but to... What, uh, oh, yeah, go ahead. Oh, okay. I was going to say, um, what I noticed about Megalochnus is that it's a very rotund animal. It's very round. It's got a very barrel-shaped chest. And I'm uh, curious as to see... Uh, as, uh, I'm curious about it, like, as to why it was that, that size, that shape. Was it, uh, was it to uh, counteract buoyancy or uh, was it just a bulky animal that lived on land browsing in leaves? Um, but yeah, uh, one thing I know that's cool about these uh, ground sloths is that they survived for quite a long time. They they uh, died out in the in the Holocene, and they weren't uh, as unfortunate as the mainland uh, ground sloths that died out near the end of the Pleistocene. So these guys were uh, around for quite some time. I think 
four thousand, five, six thousand years ago, these guys are still roaming around, which I think is pretty interesting. I would also be interested to know, uh, of course, um, you know, people who know maybe more detail about uh, the, the, maybe have some paperwork or descriptions at hand, or just generally know the history of Cuba in terms of the prehistoric uh, Cuba, what it was like prior, you know, uh, to today, and uh, how it emerged, you know, first yeah. on the map, whether or not it appeared, disappeared maybe multiple times throughout history, or whether it remained there all the time. Maybe it was part of something once and then it broke off and became its own thing. So I personally have no idea. I uh, just think that the reason uh, why we really bring this up is because we just want to get people to say, oh, I know this, this is what happened, and here is the info where I got it from. You know, I kind of yeah. want to initiate this kind of, provoke this kind of discussion here. Well, now that you mention it, uh, I just did some research uh, real quickly about uh, this ground stuff and it led me to something. Like we mentioned Curacao before. Yeah. And it seems that there is a uh, ground sloth that was found here. Unfortunately, there's no Wikipedia page on it. But it's called Paulocnus. Paulocnus? Per Petrificatus. And it's uh, related to Arac. Oh, wow, these are difficult names. Acro. Acrato. Whoa. Acratoknus from Venezuela. You might uh, want to maybe um, uh, remember to post it in the comments once yeah, I yeah. upload the video, uh, just in uh, case. I <laughs> will. Like, uh, my, what I was going to go into here is uh, if someone knows more about this, please let me know because this is interesting to know that if there was a uh, ground stuff in Curacao, then uh, I would like to know more about that. And uh, But it doesn't surprise me either because, as we mentioned, uh, Ground sloths were quite common in the Caribbean, so uh, that's uh, not not too surprising to know that there is uh, one in Curacao. Um, but yeah, like uh, Larsin said about how Cuba was uh, shaping and uh, forming during the, the the span of time in uh, prehistory, I'm curious to see how that went because during the ice ages, of course, the sea levels were uh, lower, so. I wonder what influence that would have had on the fauna, on surrounding areas. Yeah, same here. I also wanted to add that it might be worth noting that South America in general has had a very big boom of ground sloths as a whole. Oh yes, oh yes, definitely, definitely, and uh, they seem to be uh, very found, uh, found fond of uh, avocados, and they would spread their seeds around the uh, and Brazil. Uh, at least so I've read. And recently there was a paper on ground sloths from South America about their diet. And while their teeth were more uh, suited for uh, herbivorous behavior and uh, uh, herbivorous diet, uh, there was one ground sloth, I can't remember the genus, um, that while it had herbivorous teeth, it seemed to have also eaten meat. So uh, it may have scavenged or eaten smaller animals. So I think that's interesting. They uh, they took a look at two ground sloths looking at their diets. Um, I'll post a link as well in the comments or I'll send it to you later. Uh, but I think that's something interesting to mention that yes, you are right that South America had like a massive boom in ground sloths. Megatherium among them, which we all know and love. Yep, that's the that was also the star in one of the episodes from Walking with Beasts. Walking with Beasts, yep. yeah. When it basically literally just ended that's uh, one, basically one shot killed that smilodon yeah. and uh, yeah, <laughs> turned the whole thing around <laughs> for that yeah. pair <laughs> like, gr ground sloths are, are interesting to say the very least because they are uh, such a magnificent uh, uh, group of animals that uh, uh, reached like I said earlier in the video all with uh, shapes and sizes or at least I may have said it to you I'm not sure if I said it while you were recording but uh, I mentioned how ground sloths are so diverse in appearance mm -hmm. so they're very cool and uh, to find them in the Caribbean as well is, uh, is a treat it's a serious treat and uh, to make a reference joke to the Ice Age movies in, ah. order, in order to be cool they don't have to be voiced by John Leguizamo <laughs> <laughs> no, he's right he's right you know it, it might help but uh, they're already cool they're already cool <laughs> Yeah, Something yeah. interesting about John Leguizamo when he voiced Sid in Ice Age, uh, he did some research on how he would voice them and he, he learned that some sloths, they would store food inside their cheeks. So he would talk like he had uh, food inside his mouth. He would shout like this. 
Yeah, and uh, you would sound like Sid. You would, uh, They're not giving Sid Sloth out. enough time for the yeah. day. <laughs> yeah. They need to have more paintings in the case for Sloth. <laughs> exactly. You will never see a Sloth in these kind of things, you know? <laughs> 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 so it's nice to know that John Leguizamo did his research on Sloth as well. By the uh, way, Sid is... if there are any fans of John Leguizamo here, feel free to post here in the comments below. Are you? Do you happen to like uh, his work? And if you do, yeah. list your favorite work by John Leguizamo. Why not? It has to be Sid for me. I'm sorry, John, but I love your uh, your rendition of Sid. <laughs> well, he was quite good, even though it was a brief appearance in Al Pacino's yeah. uh, Carlitos Way. He was oh, only yeah. like a guest yeah, appearance, yeah. but this he, whole, yeah. you know, yeah. Hey Carlito, oh, he's a good remember me? Benny, Bran <laughs> Benny Blanco from Bronx? Bam, bam! <laughs> he was also in... The, I watched the movie uh, not too long ago. I think it was Ride Along with Ice Cube and uh, Kevin Hart. Yep. He was also in that, yeah. He's a good actor. I, I like him, I like him. Yeah, but uh, I think his voice acting of Sid just just basically just absolutely killed it. it. Like, that was literally <laughs> the, the hit. Yeah, it just, it just shows how diverse he is. He's incredible, yeah. Alright. Yeah, right. Yeah, but the one thing about Sid as well, like uh, if you pay attention to the, the second Ice Age movie, he seems to be uh, at least very well uh, versed in swimming. So if the the uh, creators of Ice Age were that intentionally and as reference to sloths in the Caribbean and in South America, I do not know, but I think that's a very nice touch, if so. Yep, and uh, by the way, I want to also make this disclaimer that I brought this up, this reference up, completely by accident. Yeah. <laughs> it just kind of fit into this topic very yeah, well, but it was a complete you, accident. <laughs> you just mentioned it and we, we segued from there. So, improvise baby, yeah? Yeah. So, <laughs> Caribbean man and a spicy Armenian man, yeah, improvise, yeah, baby. Uh, it's totally scripted, totally scripted. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so shall we, since we mentioned Cuba, I wanted to draw the attention to this creature, which is uh, not a mammal, it's a Cuban giant owl, right here. Yeah. And this thing is pretty, pretty, it's very big, and look at the long legs as well. I think well. it's cool, I think it's super cool, like, uh, this, this animal, it, it's, uh, wow, like, the long legs, <laughs> that's... Fascinating, fascinating stuff, and it's one I didn't know about either. Like I knew about uh, the only one I've known about so far that we've discussed is uh, Mega Lochness, uh, the sloth. But this guy, uh, this is a first for me. I think it's very, very cool. Also, feel free to pause the video here, just specifically yeah. went down to the text. Of course, you can just find it in Wiki because I think that he put it f um, from the Wiki, and uh, of course. Um, Another disclaimer, excuse me, another disclaimer here is that um, you have to verify things that Wikipedia uh, says yeah. just to make sure that it's consistent. So yeah. but, I'm uh, not you promoting know, it, I'm just saying do well, take notice, yeah, but check be, it. Be careful, like uh, there's a lot of things going around saying don't trust Wikipedia and uh, in some cases they're right, but Wikipedia most of the time cites their sources at the bottom. So whenever you're looking at something on Wikipedia, make sure if, uh, to look at the source, uh, look into it, see if there's any newer, uh, more up-to-date information that may contradict that you read on Wikipedia. Um, yeah, so like in essence, go on Wikipedia, read about it, but be cautious and look into the source material. Yeah. And um, uh, go ahead. Oh. The owl. Yeah, the owl. It's cool. Like uh, apparently, uh, the, this this owl was strong enough to uh, have taken down prey of thirty five kgs, which is uh, wow. <laughs> this long legged owl that looks pretty cool uh, could have taken care of a small child <laughs> if it wanted to. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say that it's it potentially is quite disturbing. I mean, if it lived, um, I mean. If it lived basically in modern day world somehow, mm -hmm. if it survived up today, I think it would still get, well, very likely it hunted down perhaps because uh, people would just consider them too dangerous. Yeah, I think uh, this thing would have been a threat to livestock and uh, chickens. So I think uh, farmers definitely would not have been a fan of this guy. 
it's not like uh, yeah it's also one of the things that makes it difficult is that this thing flies and can just literally yeah. <laughs> dive yeah. bomb snipe you it out flies, of nowhere it flies like uh, you, if you haven't looked at that, how uh, owls hunt uh, i recommend it I, I, there's pictures of owls taking on small deer as well so uh, yeah owls are terrifying and to know that one as tall as a five-year-old exists uh, terrifying <laughs> that's definitely like a predator for five-year-olds if you will yeah yeah i know keep keep your kids inside you i'll know, be honest hide your, man, kids, uh, hide your wife there might even have potentially been at least a couple of them out there that were a little bit kind of you know acting a fool a little bit and uh, would have gone for somebody like this 80, 83 kg guy next to it in the picture <laughs> just because it freaking can because uh, no. it's it would not be able to carry it no, but uh, but it, it can would, definitely do some damage. It would definitely do some damage. Yeah, yeah. Um, do you think that this owl would have taken uh, on smaller humans that lived at the time? I'm not sure if the humans existed or like uh, inhabited Cuba at uh, this time, 10k years ago, 10k. Yeah. Uh, Post comments below, but, uh, if you can verify yeah. this, whether or not uh, there were any early forms of humans. Humans. In of any uh, any 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 genus basically not necessarily yeah. homo uh, genus but any other maybe ancestral genus or any other kind yeah. of that may have like, potentially uh, been there. I feel there. like uh, primates probably did not inhabit Cuba at this time, so they probably wouldn't pray for this uh, owl. Uh, but 10k years ago, that's not too like far back in terms of human history. Uh, that's when the mega fauna started going extinct on main continents. So. I, I feel like it. Uh, it's definitely possible that humans inhabited Cuba at this time. Uh, not entirely sure, but again, like Arsene said, if someone's able to verify this, let us know. Uh, yeah, would but be interesting. do you think, Arsene, like if if they did, do you think this this owl would have gone after uh, kids and uh, smaller uh, smaller individuals? I would. Okay. Uh... I mean, it's not like we can, can exactly check it unless some yeah. evidence mi pops up miraculously. But if I were to make my bet, I would bet maybe seventy-five to eighty-five percent that it did. Yeah, yeah. I, I feel like there's definitely a chance that an unintended child that would be roaming around in the tropics of Cuba would uh, definitely get at least harassed by the South. Oh, hundred um, percent. Yeah. Somebody, you know how kids are. They would just ri run around yeah, and sometimes play. Sometimes they just they're reckless, you know. And pra uh, practice maybe something because back in the days there were only limited things that people do. Because technically, yeah. early humans yeah. were just like normal animals. You know, they would just yeah, they, do what everyone else does. And uh, yeah, you got to survive, you know. And uh, humans, you know, we've been intelligent for a while, so you know, you might need some form of stimulation for entertainment for our brains. So, a child might feel bored in its little group or tribe of humans and might wander off looking for some rocks or sticks to play with. Or exploring, simply exploring. Exploring, simply yeah. exploring as well. And the other thing as well to worth noting is um, 10,000 years ago, of course, if anybody can verify this, let me know, but I don't believe that bows and arrows or even basic slings, uh, you know, slingshots well, were around, were humans they? Humans did have, I'm not sure about slingshots and bows, but they had uh, something called an uh, atlatl, like, something like that. And they had a weird spear throwing uh, tool. It has a weird name uh, that would increase the power and in, in, in distance of a, a spear. Uh, I'm gonna try and find it. Uh, I think it's that's a lot. Of, yeah, it is. It is spear thrower. I'll send you, uh, send you some images. Yeah. Uh, it will but the be humans back then also used uh, used these on large megafauna, and I think there's one that was carved into a into a mammoth as well. Which I, uh, yeah, here it is. Here it is. <laughs> yep. It's basically to to get you a better explanation for it. It's um, it's like a giant arrow with uh i would assume this is like some kind of a stick or holder of some kind yeah it's it's a, some type of holder that humans would uh would throw they would they would put their spear in this and they would 
chuck it as far as they could. And these things would be made out of uh, bone a lot of the time. So do you think that this kind of thing could have been used potentially to repel if they were to coexist? W would they already know this type of thing or in yeah, invent it, maybe invented it somehow to be able to repel uh, predators? <laughs> Well, th that's the thing, like, something like an owl is quite agile and uh, quick. How do you snipe one out with this uh, out of midair <laughs> when yeah. it's going for you or for your it kid? It's a very clear <laughs> shot, maybe, <laughs> maybe. No, no, there's thing. another thing to it. Let's say it's going for your kid, right, and you are there by the side trying to snipe the owl. How do you know that you're not going to hit your kid by accident? That, that is also true. Friendly that fire, is also isn't true. it? Yeah, 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 you got to be careful. I think you, your best bet is going in... Uh, with your hands, <laughs> getting ready to get... Uh... Just starts, like, yeah, tackling it, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, that's the Cuban owl for you. Pretty big yeah. critter. It's very interesting. Very like interesting, we, uh, yeah. Long legs yeah, as we well. Talk, yeah, we talked quite a bit about this guy. And, um, yeah, I would be curious to see maybe some more, you know, things just being produced to kind of shine more light on, th on this particular... Uh, animal to see if maybe eventually we might find more of them and uh, maybe there's a whole group of them that was that has yeah. a history on that place and maybe on, in Cuba maybe other places too so mm -hmm. are we ready to move on to the next uh, creature then yes I think all right are. let's go to the Dinopithecus and we are now transitioning ah. into <laughs> Africa now, Dinopithecus, this guy is absolutely terrifying. It's one I do uh, know relatively well. Like, I, I know, I, I guess, a bit more than the average person. But then again, the average person probably doesn't know about Dinopithecus. So, uh, there's definitely people that know more about it than I do. Uh, I know that it's quite larger <laughs> than the uh, than the uh, average baboon we have today. And these guys uh, have been portrayed like hunting on humans in paleo art as well, like early humans and hominids. Uh, I'm not sure humans, but like hominids, I think it's a better term. Um, but if you know baboons, you know these guys had massive teeth. They, they are absolutely terrifying. <laughs> baboons are very terrifying creatures. So Dinopithecus, uh, I, I don't think I would want to encounter one in real life. <laughs> I would love to see a mammoth, maybe even a T-Rex, with my own eyes, but I, I think I'll stay clear of a Dinopithecus. So it let me get this straight, terrifying. you would be comfortable hanging around the T-Rex, but not comfortable around the Dinopithecus? No, not maybe not hanging around, I think <laughs> I could admire a T-Rex from a distance. Um, but I like I, I'm a bit uneasy, <laughs> I guess, if I were to see a Dinopithecus, because... Uh, I know, it's something about baboons, man. Baboons are scary. <laughs> They're really <laughs> scary. I, I think it's because we have a modern-day reference for baboons and Dinopithecus, and we don't for T-Rex. That's true. Um, because you, so maybe you kind of feel like T-Rex is such a distant past that it just yeah, exactly. it doesn't feel like it can potentially... The image <laughs> can haunt you in any way anymore. Exactly. Whereas baboons, I have seen them. Yeah, I've seen how terrifying they can be. I've seen them, like, tear apart small gazelle and... Impala, so uh, I, I think Dinopithecus would have been twice as terrifying. And uh, as, you, as you can see on uh, Robin's website, here it is facing off with a fucking uh, with a leopard. Yep. Like, what? <laughs> That's terrifying. Like, leopards today, they eat baboons, and this baboon is uh, facing off with one. Yeah, yeah so... this, this, this one will basically, <laughs> like, fuck up. Uh, a clan of hyenas, probably, if it were yeah, to. Yeah, yeah, this guy, but he's cool. Like, it's terrifying, but it's a cool creature. You yeah. Know? <laughs> Clarify. It's very... It, uh, it's it's well, like a... I wouldn't really call it a King Kong of Africa of that time, because I don't yeah, even know if had, it's accurate, because gorilla, had, King Kong was modeled after gorilla, yeah, technically. Yeah, yeah. But, and uh, then again, you have uh, Gigantopithecus Blackie, I think, from Africa as well. Mm-hmm. Because this one, as far as I know, this one is what in Indians. That's the typical representative, which means mm -hmm. it's the type species. Yeah, exactly. So, and uh, but, if Roman yeah. is correct with his estimates, uh, 120 centimeters height and uh, weighing in range of 30 to 77 kgs. <laughs> yeah, no, this is not an animal you want to fight, man. This, 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 you don't want this animal near you. You don't want to upset it, man. I mean. Uh, 
Even if I were Bruce Lee, I probably still would be like, nah, thanks. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Bruce Lee is uh, talented and uh, brave, but he's not stupid, you know? <laughs> Well, was R E P, but uh, oh, yeah, R. but R. still R E P. Yeah, but still, you know, this thing, dude. Th this is the funny thing. Even though it weighs pretty much in a range or smaller even than an average, uh, fully grown adult human male in his prime, yeah. if you will, the the human male would not be able to fight in the same strength no. as this thing. This no, thing would still fight not. much stronger. Yeah, like primates uh, in general, especially large apes, they, they are very muscular. And baboons are no uh, stranger to uh, this as well. So uh, a human of like similar size and pro pro most likely bigger as well would not fare very well against this guy. I would but, probably uh, say if I wanted to, I would, I would be curious uh, to see how somebody like Dwayne Johnson or this... Uh, What's his name? Uh, what's his other name? Come on, this guy. Uh, no, 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 not the Rock. The Rock is Dwayne Johnson. The Rock. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought you were looking for a different name for him. No. But there is another. There is another guy. If you've seen Game of Thrones, he plays. Oh, uh, oh. Uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, for uh, what's his Halfborn? Uh, Bjornsson. Somebody Bjornsson. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, he's from he's Iceland, like I think. Giant. Yeah, yeah. He's from Iceland. Um, he's like the strongest man alive today, I think, or something like that. Uh, or... Yeah, him. It's it's like he he's con he was considered for a long time the strongest man alive. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. At least for a yeah. certain period of time, yeah. Yeah. And uh, yeah. But I know uh, what you mean, but like yeah, for Bjornsson, that's that's who he was. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, that's it. So I would like yeah. to see if he would be able to yeah, take he's down giant, one of giant, you know. <laughs> well, I mean, uh, I don't for, Shaquille yeah, Shaquille O'Neal yeah, maybe. Shaquille O'Neal was also like uh, massive. He got like uh, or Yao Ming. Uh, Imagine Shaquille O'Neal like destroy uh, backboards of a uh, basketball court. So uh, place your <laughs> bets knows? in the comments, guys. Who would win? Yeah, yeah who would win? <laughs> if you, okay, let's make it interesting. Like, if there's which human do you think could have fare, fared well against this guy? Yeah, against Dino Piff. The, the, and we're, we'll make a, give you a specific one. This particular individual, which is yeah. big and a male, like in his prime, Dinopithecus. Like, you know, yeah. let's go full all the way, ape shit. Yes. Pun, 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 seven, in, pun intended. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Either way, I think we can safely say I, I'm, I don't have much hope in this leopard in the image of uh, Winnie. <laughs> that leopard probably isn't trying to fight it. I think that leopard, if anything, is going to be fleeing any second. Now. Yeah, I think it was just minding his business and then I because it was like, hey, you came to the wrong uh, place at the wrong time. Man. Yeah, Keep my, it my place, my, uh, my <laughs> dirt, my sand, my rocks, go away, mine, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> But again, uh, credits to uh, Roman because this is this is cool. This is cool. I love this. Yeah, nice illustration. And of mm -hmm. course, as always, it's not much text here. But let's say if you want to pause here, feel free to pause and read more description. Yeah. So, are we ready to move now to your favorite uh, animal ah, category? Let's go. <laughs> so let's uh, go into this. Uh, well. Let's go into this Paleoloxodon Reki quickly. Oh man. Or Reki, whatever. Yeah, you... okay, so Paleoloxodon Reki, uh, it's super cool because, uh, well, at first it was known as Elephus Reki, so like the same genus as the modern day Asian elephant. Um, well, before I continue, uh, Roman, like, again, very uh, amazing job on the. Uh, on the uh, photo bashing here looks looks absolutely wonderful and he um gave paleoloxon on recce the very high domed uh, head as well which is accurate um something cool about paleoloxon on recce like when you think of paleoloxon you think of very large bulky animals and recce was no different but compared to anticus paleoloxon anticus uh, recce was very slender in build similar to mammoths like it was like quite similar proportion to uh the uh, step mammoth and mammoths in general very slender uh long for uh, forearms as well sloping back um but it's cool it's cool and uh it's it's still like paleoloxon in general is related to uh asian elephants so that, that was also hard to distinguish uh, this guy from elephants that's probably why it was known as elephants before but uh now with the recent papers and studies uh 
has been brought into question because Paleolox and Anticus uh, seems to have been more closely related to the African forest elephant, Loxodonta cyclotis. But this is all due to uh, the fact that elephants in general, like the whole group, true elephants, mammoths, Paleoloxodon, Loxodonta, uh, elephants, the, uh, mammoths, uh, like I mentioned, they, they too uh, originated in Africa despite later on being uh, adapted to the cold. But they all lived in Africa and they would all interbreed with one another. Which uh, caused a lot. It still it still does cause a lot of uh, issues when it comes to looking at the phylogenetics of these animals. And uh, I think now with uh, knowing that Paleoloxodon is more closely related to Loxodonta, it's going to bring more issues uh, into uh, the family tree. And I wonder what will happen with P. Recchi as well. But Paleoloxodon and Recchi. Uh, Coexisted with Loxodonta and uh, some elephant species, I think. Uh, I could be wrong, but it coexisted with other uh, elephants, and eventually, unfortunately, it, it uh, could just not compete with Loxodonta because I feel uh, I, I think that P. Recchia, if you were to look at its molars, um, it was very, very uh, specialized in grazing, and but but. Uh, uh, it lasted for quite a while. Like it was, uh, um, it, ex- it existed from the uh, Pliocene to the uh, I think early Pleistocene. So it, it it managed for quite a long time, and eventually, I, I while it died out in Africa, its descendants uh, uh, evolved into uh, Paleolox and Anticus and Nomadicus. Um, but the general general uh, generalist diet of Loxodonta eventually outcompeted uh, Paleolox and Recchi, unfortunately. So, uh, basically, if I understand correctly, is uh, Paleoloxodon Recchi ancestral to Paleoloxodon Anticus and uh, Nomadicus? Uh, I, I, I believe so, yeah. Um, but it's like, uh, uh, again, because it was, this was known as Elephas before, uh, I sent you a picture, uh, a name of certain Elephas uh, species. And, yeah, we will uh, cover them as well, yeah. Yeah, but they um, are said to be uh, descendants of Paleolox and Recchi, but when this was said, uh, Paleolox and Recchi was known as Elephas Recchi. So that would probably mean that th- these uh, Elephas uh, species were also Paleoloxodon, and maybe they were uh, the, uh, the uh, what's, what's it called? They were the ancestors of uh, Paleolox and Anticus and Nomadicus in Eurasia. Um, or they either diverged from Paleolox and Recchi and died out in Africa. Uh, but that's something we'll get into later as well, because that's a whole different thing. Um, but I think right now, to answer your question, I think it is uh, accepted that P. Recchi is ancestral to uh, Anticus and Nomadicus. Yeah, the whole idea of the changing the relationship with uh, a different taxon kind of flipped yeah. uh, the whole image entirely. Yeah. Exactly, and uh, <coughs> we are aware of this. If you, I think it's, it's one of my favorite lines in on Wikipedia. Um, when you look uh, uh, look up uh, Elephante Day on Wikipedia, it, it, it does state that the... <laughs> The elephante, the, the phylogenetic tree is constantly changing, constantly changing, and it's it, it keeps uh, it, it it will keep changing until uh, until we find more uh, data. Like it's frequently being revised, and it's very unstable. Unstable is what it said. It's a very unstable, uh, the whole classification bonanza. <laughs> Yeah, as usual, when you have incomplete uh, material uh, of yeah, uh, exactly. specimens, that exactly. kind of doesn't help the case either. Mm-hmm. Okay, so, uh, of course, uh, as you know, as we all know, that Paleoloxodon as a genus itself is actually quite uh, diverse as well. There are many of mm-hmm. them, very, so there would not be enough to cover all of them, particularly since this is a <laughs> specifically themed video, so we're not going to go into the Eurasian species here, but yeah. if you wanna want us to do a dedicated video for segment uh, with Idnes uh, again to do the uh, Paleoloxodon yeah. as a genus, then uh, we can definitely <laughs> make one. We would be here for a while. Like, I we we would you. be here for a while, <laughs> yes. <laughs> even, even without Jeffrey, we would still be here for a while. Yeah, yeah. So... Uh, but yeah, Paleoloxodon, very interesting uh, 
animal. Um, I think we were lucky with Pilaloxon Reki because we uh, found a large 40 year old male and elephants, African elephants at least, they uh, stopped growing at their 40s and the male that we found was like uh, four, four, uh, about four meters tall and weighing about 12 tons. Um, but it, it, it was a, a pretty good specimen as well. I think I feel uh, I think we got a piece of the skull, got some of the skull and uh, some of the leg bones. I'm not sure entirely what material you have of it, but uh, it was enough for us to determine that it was a male and uh, oh, and it was forty as well. So mm. I think we got pretty lucky in the case of really lost on wrecking. Do you have any idea where the specimen is at right now? Which collection does it belong to? Any no, ideas? I don't, unfortunately. But I know in India they have uh, they have a very cool skull of Namaticus. Uh, I know the the uh, Pelinloxodon reki that uh, the forty year old male. It was found in Morocco, I believe. Um, but I don't know where it is now. Um, but that's something I should probably look into. That's a good question. Feel free to post in the comments if you know where this specimen is housed at and displayed, if, if yeah. it is displayed, that is, of course. Or maybe yeah, if yeah. you have a good quality reconstruction yeah. where they are there, the, found. There is a cast of its jaw in Berlin. That, that I do know. Right. Okay, so let's move on to the next one if you're happy with this one. Yeah, yeah. So let's go to the Stegotetrabelladon, uh, the uh, four-tusked yeah. one. <laughs> so. What's interesting about this, and I told our seniors earlier as well, um, I did not know that this was a, uh, it's considered a true elephant. Uh, as I mentioned, true elephants uh, consist of uh, mammoths, paleo, loxodon, African elephants, Asian elephants, uh, anankas, prime elephants. Um, but Stego tetrabelodon looks like a gompophere to me. It looks like it would be related to gompophiriums. Um, so I did not consider it a true elephant, but maybe uh, I'm not alone in this. Please, if someone else is, has an interest in elephants, let me know if I may be missing something or if it is unknown whether this is a true elephant or a Campophyrium, whether it's debated or not, because I, I would be interested in knowing this. Um, but yeah, it's fascinating, but this guy is cool, like four massive tusks, which by the way, in the past, we found uh, you know, modern day African elephants with four tusks. Uh, unfortunately, they, they, there's no pictures of uh, them alive, but uh, there's pictures of hunters with skulls of uh, four tusked elephants that they hunted in Africa. But Stegotetrabelodon is also uh, a very massive animal. <laughs> um, I feel, I, I think it's uh, over uh, four meters, four meters, uh, three and a half, I'd say, uh, eight tons, if I remember correctly, from. Laramendi's paper, which by the way, I will also uh, send to our scene so you could link it somewhere. Uh, Laramendi covered elephants uh, quite uh, well in his uh, in his paper of 2016. It was more so about the uh, shoulder height and mass of elephants, but he covered a lot of uh, taxa, which was uh, fascinating. And Stecco Tetrabelladon was in there as well, if I recall. Um, it's interesting that I'm this article here uh, actually does some consider that there is a possibility because it says a genus of an elephant or gompothere. Oh, it says uh, that? Yeah, it says that in the description here, which is very interesting because ah, you, you said okay, it yourself okay. and then I just saw it and I was just like, wow, that's, call it a coincidence or not. But yes, there is indeed, um, at least a, just, you know, let's just say word of mouth opinion that it could be a gompothere. Yeah, okay. So yeah, that in my eyes, I think that would make sense if it was a gompothere. If it, were, if it is an elephant, that would be very surprising to me. It could just um, be like an anomaly of some kind, in a sense. If it maybe. were a gompothere, you know, it would be just a ridiculously large gompothere yeah. that convergently evolved the yeah. body plan of a uh, true elephant. Oh, maybe that is the case. That is also a very uh, good point. Um, one thing about gompothere, small little fact, they are the most robust elephants. They, they are very stocky and very wide and along with Mastodon. Yeah, that's one so of the things that many people already. probably don't know. They're, they're about massive. Them. <laughs> yeah. yeah, even though they're not actually like, in terms of dimensions, like mentioned... they're not they're not large animals in comparison yeah. to uh, proboscis as a standard, if yeah. you will. Yeah, exactly. Uh, like I mentioned, it relaxes and It's a very tall and slender uh, elephant, and like mammoths, that's like the sloping back, very 
tall limbs, long, long limbs, slender limbs, and uh, while they're still massive animals, the mastodons and the gumpafirs, they are very stocky, relatively short-legged. Uh, um, but uh, what Roman uh, here, uh, what he uh, illustrated, what he photobashed, uh, is still a quite leggy uh, uh which might be why it may be considered a true elephant. So, yeah, it, it's it's difficult to say whether it's a gump of pure an elephant, because I I would uh, I take it that uh, Roman did his research on this guy, and because so far I've been very impressed by his work and research, so these proportions do remind me of an elephant. And again, amazing job on the photo bashing here. I think it looks looks pretty cool. This also reminds me of this fantasy creature, uh, Mumakil from Lord of the Rings, which obviously is exaggerated in every yeah, possible yeah. level you can think of, both in size, which probably would not <laughs> even exist and be possible in real life, and um, no, no, also no, no, no. in uh, the shape of tusks and all that stuff. But um, yeah, it's uh, mm -hmm. it's pretty interesting to see that there is a real creature that at least remotely uh, resembles something that we've mm -hmm. seen yeah. in fantasy. Exactly. Unless, of course, uh, yeah, Tolkien Central intended Central it somehow, Central which Central. I don't know if he did. Yeah, who knows? Um, yeah, If you uh, are able to pull it up, if not, then it's fine. But I sent you some images of uh, uh, skulls of African elephants that had four tusks. Um, uh, but unfortunately... Yeah, we probably uh, might be able to pull it up. Uh, yeah. Like so. And yeah, uh, there is another yeah. image that I can pull up quickly as well mm -hmm. that you've sent me. So that shouldn't be a problem. Yeah, uh, there we go. it's fascinating. Like I, I am, I, I think it's the, it's a shame that we don't have any live pictures of an African elephant with four tusks, unfortunately. Because um, I think it would have been cool to see that. <laughs> like, what would that look like? <laughs> and it would have provided probably a good uh, reference to uh, to Tolkien when he was creating his uh, Mamku. Would also make me feel somewhat very curious, and it does still that uh, whether or not, and post your comments if you know more guys, whether uh, or not this um, Stegotetrabelladon, just like African elephant, whether actually the four tusk specimens maybe it was an anomaly of some kind rather than an nice. actual thing, if you will. Yeah, but then of course we have Gompophiums as well, where this is the norm for them. Yeah. Um, so then again, that that also makes me think like maybe it is a gumpafir, and it's so confusing. Um, but having tusks in the lower jaw and elephants that that's been uh, around uh, in just gumpafirs and mastodons. So to see it in an elephant is interesting. So I think if I had to make a final verdict on it, I would lean towards it being just a gumpafir because I cannot think of any. Elephant. Well, I think Primelephus. It's it's a. Uh, I think that's the ancestor of the uh, of modern day elephants. I think it had uh, lower jaw tusks. So. Yeah, it's it's very hard to say, <laughs> but I I think I th that maybe Stegotrichobelodon might have been a uh, gumpafir. Um, Leaning a bit more towards the camp here. Do you have like any opinion on where you stand, Arsene? I, j just based off the looks, obviously, I would lean towards the Gumpa here as well. That, as I mentioned earlier, might have yeah. just, you know, coincidentally developed a body plan that favors more, you know, um, land dwelling type of lifestyle with longer legs yeah. and bigger strides as well, rather yeah. than the more semi-aquatic or whatever lifestyle that the true gumpathiers really favored i would believe because they did mm -hmm. live a lot near the waters and um, i would imagine that in south america specifically during my yeah, in, yeah, in the swamps, areas, yeah, yeah and they would be preyed upon by the likes of the purosaurus the giant huge caiman uh, yeah 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 quite easily i would imagine and uh, or at least not the fully grown ones but at least the smaller ones definitely would mm -hmm. fall prey to them for yeah. sure and um yeah, in contrast, it kind of does, um, you know, make you wonder whether they just happened to have changed their body plan and adapted to something else before they might mm -hmm. have just gone out completely 
like as a last ditch attempt to just basically adapt. You no, know I think you're onto something because uh, I think Campofiers are not very recent compared to other elephants. Uh, if uh, Roman is correct, it says here that they, these guys existed uh, during the late Miocene and early Pliocene. And in the Pliocene is when uh, mammoths and the uh, Paleoloxodon started emerging. And uh, for Gompophiers to adapt and start looking more like elephants, like you were saying, uh, during this time near when true elephants started appearing, to me that seems like it would make sense. It's almost similar to, although of course context is considerably different in terms of the timeline maybe of how it was of magnitude, but the general principle is something that I thought was similar to what you see if we quickly transition to dinosaurs and we look at Carcharodontosaurids yeah. and mm -hmm. uh, Tyrannosauridae and how uh, once Carcharodontosaurids gone extinct you will notice that Tyrannosauridae pretty much started off with the model that Carcharodontosauridae yeah. abandoned which, uh, well I mean not abandoned but they gone extinct obviously exactly. and uh, the line basically was interrupted at that point and, yeah. um, but what happened was that they developed a body plan uh, that favored larger proportions of head, smaller yeah, forearms and Bigger exactly. legs, bigger tail, bigger torso, just overall very heavy. It was stock just more, plan. more favorable for them. Yeah. So it's probably environmental stresses may have led to body plants that favored the longer legged animals. And, you know, with the theropods that you mentioned, environment stresses and changes of uh, prey animals probably favored the, you know, less strong forearms and more uh, devastating bites and huger heads. Bigger heads. Yeah, bigger heads, exactly. And the Tyrannosaurids, once we see the first ones, and the first one that we can definitely identify is uh, Lithronax argestis, which already comes with yeah. a relatively big head anyway. Mm -hmm. So, and then it just kind of goes on and on. And so that we yeah. don't get too distracted, obviously, but that's the kind of analog I'm kind of looking at. That uh, yeah. they could yeah. be two it's, unrelated it's, it's animals. Comparison. I think it's a good comparison that you just made. Yeah. I think it's good to compare the two, despite being so different. Uh, you know, there's definitely some mimicking, rules. if you will. Yeah, yeah, convergent evolution in, in a way, but like not in terms of appearance, but uh, it's almost favor, like if evolution favoring was, a different body uh, plan. Like if there was like some kind of a bank, you know, of model of evolution, and it just sort of yeah. decides to gamble on what to invest on because. Let's just say yeah. it gambled on Carcharodon and the Sorids, but they went extinct, so the model wasn't quite complete, perhaps, and they then the evolutionary banks, after still a millions more years, decided, let's just produce and start up a line of Tyrannosauridae with the similar mm -hmm. type of body plan, but let's also make them stockier, wider proportionally, and uh, give them bigger teeth, yeah. you know, and give and them better... Improving better, on the previous yeah. model. Improving on the previous model, exactly, and just highlighting yeah. all the strength of the exactly. predecessors uh, and enhancing them to a different level. And that's how we eventually ended up yeah. with a T-Rex, which was even for a Tyrannosaurid standards, you know, quite ridiculous in many ways. Insane. Insane. Yeah. It was knocking a thing out of the ballpark. But, uh, you know, I mentioned convergent evolution. Uh, maybe that was the case with uh, Stegotrish down here. Uh, and it was uh, a trend set or maybe even for uh, this body plan. You know, but then again, you have a, another early uh, proboscidean dinotherium from Africa. Uh, that one's also a very laggy, laggy animal. Uh, in fact, dinotherium had very mobile uh, like forearms and, and hands. And it's kind of creepy to think about, but they were like a bit more mo mobile with their fingers. And it's it's kind of creepy. <laughs> but they, they were mobile in general with their legs. I wanted but to make a quick disclaimer that the reason why um, uh, we're not bringing up uh, Dinotherium, Arsinotherium and Moritherium is because they are just relatively well known and we kind of wanted to address the ones that are lesser yeah, exactly. known in this video. So, uh, But if you want us to obviously do this, uh, as I said, we still have time before the month runs out and we can still we do time. it in November, so we can definitely we take time. this off further. Yeah. And I think in February, uh, it's other countries that uh, celebrate Black History Month or whatever, so... Yeah, we can uh, continue with our Caribbean yeah. and African uh, thing exactly. theme. Exactly. So. Okay. But, uh, 
Yeah, that's it for Stego Touch of Peladon, I think. Uh, I don't think I have anything else to say, other than it's super cool. And uh, you mentioned Lythornax. Uh, I think Stego Touch of Peladon would uh, body Lythornax. I thought I should mention that. <laughs> well, uh, I mean, uh, to be honest, that thing would probably be able to absolutely destroy anything. <laughs> and, uh, in my opinion, even T-Rex would have a pretty tough time against a fully yeah. grown one like this here. If it's a male, yeah. which it probably is, we yeah, can, uh, yeah I, I would probably say that's, uh, yeah, even a T-Rex probably wouldn't really want to mess with it, in my personal mm -hmm. humble opinion, as much of a fan of a T-Rex as I am. And I'm generally very, you know, I like carnivores. Generally, carnivores tend yeah. to be more of my favorite can, animals. Yeah, I can, uh, I can vouch for them. <laughs> so, and uh, if given that uh, uh, consideration and context, I would still think that Stegotetra Belladon would still be able to fuck them up. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> it would definitely be able to fuck them up, that, that, that's for sure. Like looking at It doesn't this... look like it's something that will take shit from anything, to be honest. Yeah, no, like, you know, I don't think it's cool, Arsene, that we've covered this guy and we've spoken about him, and I've genuinely grown more interested, interested in, this, uh, in this specific genus. So I'll definitely be on the lookout for more of him. Because uh, it's super cool, it's super cool, it's super massive. Yep. Uh, it does yeah. compete with some of the biggest sort of uh, elephants. Uh, yeah, it, it's quite well. large. It's quite large. Uh, I'm not sure if this is even like the average here, be being uh, 8 tons. I'd probably say but it's I'm probably. His, it I think Roman is kind of giving it a bit of a max. I don't think he's going for the average. I yeah. think this is one of the things that you need to know about Roman and his illustrations that a lot of times he. Uh, likes to push to the maximum, but not doesn't necessarily maybe exceed yeah. the limit. But he does like to illustrate what would the maximum size look like if it were true, for example. Yeah, which you think? Is, if it, I think that's cool. I think it's cool. It makes the animal a lot, uh, uh, a lot more impressive as well. Like you can sit there and be like, "Wow, this is how big this animal could get." And one thing I love about Roman is the size charts he uh, includes. Fast made it truly fascinating. I'm actually wondering if the man in the charts is actually just him. Because I've never seen his face, you see. <laughs> Maybe. I mean, that could be him, really. Or, it could, be, or it could be one of his friends or family members posing as a model, I don't know. And the female lady model may, might have been one of his relatives or maybe it's uh, his wife, potentially. So yeah. let me know if you know, guys. Talk in the comments. Do you know who that is? Is this Roman basically about yeah, to get then... stomped by Stegotetra Belladon? <laughs> Roman, get out of the way, he's coming! Get out coming. of the way, man! Don't be standing there for nothing, in it. Don't die for nothing, man! <laughs> <laughs> Not worth it! <laughs> Alright, so let's... Now, actually, um... the yeah, go ahead. question is, hang on, before we move on, I need to know. Do you think Orlando Bloom could take Stegotetra Belladon with a bow and arrow? Fat fucking chance. Come on, man, it's not Hollywood, <laughs> in it? So, Legolas would get flattened by this thing. <laughs> like, it doesn't matter how many arrows it stick, he sticks into them, and no matter how great his bow is, it's still gonna take a little while for an animal of this size to, for its brain and nerve system to catch up to the fact that it's just about to die. It's, it's not only gonna... Not only is it gonna stomp him, it's gonna like take have a time to sit down on top of him and then when it realizes that it's already dead it's gonna fall on top of him and still yeah. flatten him anyway if that if the first time wasn't enough exactly so exactly. yeah no chance sorry Orlando Bloom as much as I like your character mm -hmm. and I thought that they <laughs> cheesed the crap out of it in the Hobbit trilogy for god knows what reason other than money I guess but um yeah I I believe that uh this uh, thing would absolutely flatten him, IRL. Yeah, I agree, I agree. Okay, so... so uh, anything else to add on this guy? Moving on, I think. Okay, let's well, go... He's cool. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. my uh, closing statement on Sega Church. <laughs> Super cool. Super cool guy, yeah. Let's go to African Mammoth then. Ah, yeah, the, yeah, yeah, specifically, yeah. this one is the Mammutus uh, subplaniforms, however you yeah. pronounce it. So, the thing with mammoths, uh, besides modern day African elephants, these guys are my, my, my favorites, like hands down. Um, Mammutus uh, sub 
platforms. Uh, it's one of the earliest mammoths. It's not the earliest. The earliest would be uh, Mammutus African Vanus, which is uh, from the very early Pliocene, and it literally means like African ancestor mammoth, uh, mammoth ancestor. And then eventually, after uh, Mammutus African Vanus uh, vanished, subplaniforms took its place, and eventually. So plenty forms uh, survive for a while. Uh, I think uh, we'll cover so plenty forms later in the end of the video. Got an interesting paper uh, talking about so plenty forms. But it, it coexisted with uh, different elephants, like uh, in, in, even uh, e even uh, stuff like uh, the uh, ancestors of Loxodonta, uh, Loxodonta koki, uh, Kuki, uh, something along those lines. It's a species name. Yeah, I'm trying to remember it as well. Yeah, uh, it's it's a weird pronunciation. C O O K E Y. Um, but it coexisted with these uh, elephants, and uh, it uh, managed to survive long enough. Well, at least Mammuthus as a genus um, coexisted with these guys long enough to spread into Eurasia. But that's also probably because. Um, Mammutus wasn't generalized enough to compete with Loxodonta. Um, while this guy managed to outlive, I believe, uh, Anankus, which is a, another elephant that lived uh, in Africa at the time, which was a more browsing, uh, more browsing orientated uh, elephant. Um, it, uh, it would share its habitat a lot more with uh, Loxodonta and uh, eat same grasses but still be by its standards of the time be, be quite generalized and, and when in competition with Anankus and Oxodonta it could switch to a browsing diet and maybe Anankus switched to this browsing diet specifically to avoid competition with Mammutus uh, Subplani Fronts and Oxodonta but uh, eventually Mammutus uh, Subplani Fronts also uh, went extinct and it left Oxodonta uh, ruling Africa but Mammutus at the time, as a genus, had traveled to Eurasia when Mammutus subplaniforms vanished. I think it's Mammutus rumanus that gave rise to Mammutus metrium nolansis, which is the southern mammoth, which gave rise to the steppe mammoth, Mammutus trigonferi. And Mammutus trigonferi gave rise to the Colombian mammoth and the mammoth that we know uh, and love. And so subplaniforms, Mammutus subplaniforms is a very... Uh, very uh, important, I'd say, very important species in the uh, mammoth uh, phylogenetic tree. It's a, uh, I think it's, a, it's an important milestone when it comes to elephants in general. So uh, it's interesting that as well uh, to note how some of these, uh, especially when you mentioned steppe mammoths, which I have actually taken pictures of and seen the skeleton up front uh, yeah. in the uh, which was which is in Azov, which is very close to my uh, birth town of Rostov-on-Don, which uh, roughly in that area is where the skeleton was actually found. So and it yeah, was subsequently I, placed in that collection. Like, uh, that was inhabited that area for sure. Yeah. And uh, I just gotta really say, guys, when you stand next to them, they are freaking huge. Yeah. And um, uh, yeah, it's true. Like even woolly mammoths, by mammoth standards, they they aren't the largest at all. Like. Uh, you still have smaller species. I think Romanus was smaller. Mammutus exilis was smaller. Uh, but woolly maps. I, I went to a museum uh, not too long ago for the first time. I think it was uh, a month or two ago. And I saw a large bull woolly mammoth in the, uh, in the museum. And it was ginormous. It was massive. And it was so impressive. And to think that, wow, this isn't even the largest of this genus. Um, blows my mind and Mammutus subplaniforms despite being an early uh, an early species of Mammutus was quite large I think it had a weight of 9 tons uh, if I remember a seer letter in this paper correctly and had a shoulder height of about 4 meters so it was definitely an impressive creature and uh, despite being such an early animal as well Notice one other thing that uh, steppe mammoth, although being absolutely huge, and when it gave rise, according to what you said, to woolly mammoth as an ancestor, which is what it evolved into, and then of course the Colombian mammoth was its descendant, if I'm correct, yeah. right? Notice how Colombian yeah, exactly. mammoth uh, maintained the size, 
but the woolly they mammoth did? downgraded on the size in comparison. Yeah, this, yeah. yeah this is because, of course, uh, they inhabited harsh environments, and yeah. a too massive size would not be uh, uh, favorable for them. So they had to shrink down a bit. But in Europe, the woolly mammoths were much larger than the ones in Siberia. The largest woolly mammoth that we know for certain uh, was found in Germany, I believe, which is 8.2 tons and 3.5 and meters tall. While the average in Europe is uh, 3.15 meters and 6 tons, which is the same size as an African elephant. Size to Asian elephants. A bit taller and heavier, but they were smaller than African elephants, but about uh, the size of Asian elephants, a bit bigger on average. So um, I think this, this does imply then that Mammoth's subplane fronts uh, lived in an environment where a large size wasn't too much of an issue and food, food was plentiful enough, uh, which is what the paper uh, covers as well. Um, and this probably goes for Peloxen as well, a uh, Reki that also lived there at a similar time. Cool. Well, um, I'm quite happy if you are to go into the next uh, mammoth species, which yeah. is uh, Mammutus uh, africanavus, or africanavus, or yeah. whatever you pronounce it as. How would That's you say it? <laughs> Africanavus. Uh, no, even I can't pronounce it. <laughs> 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 Africanavus. Africanavus. Yeah. All right. Let's click on this uh, picture right here, and we will probably and, uh, have to zoom in a little bit uh, just to put it up there. There we go. Yeah. Um, so this guy is the uh, I mentioned him uh, a bit in uh, the previous topic uh, on subplanting fronts. This is the OG mammoth, if you will. <laughs> this is the guy that started it all. Um, I think this guy was a bit smaller than Saplani Front, if I'm correct. Um, I was reading a bit on him uh, not too uh, long ago, and uh, the question was, uh, there was a question that uh, about whether when this guy uh, went extinct, whether it gave rise to uh, Saplani Front, or whether it had reached a dead end and died off, and a common ancestor uh, gave rise to Saplani Front. But I don't think we know too much about Mammutus africanavus, unfortunately. Um, but that that usually is the case with uh, early African elephants, unfortunately, where we usually just find molars and teeth. Sometimes, if we're lucky, we find the, the head, uh, which we were lucky with with subplanifrons. We found an entire forelimb and the uh, skull. And some of the back uh, back legs of vertebrae, but with African elephants, uh, I don't think we have much. I think we have a molar. Uh, that that's what I know of, at least. Um, but yeah, it's a uh, when I when I look at the molar, the ridges are very large. They were very large ridges, and there weren't many. So this guy um, wasn't as uh, specialized into grazing. I I uh, wager. I'd uh, think that maybe, or maybe it was completely specialized in grazing, um, because while it had uh, large, robust ridges, I'll send you a picture of the uh, of the molar. Uh, unlike mastodons, they're not conical, nipple-shaped uh, ridges, which were preferable for uh, browsing. So I can't really tell if um, the diet that. Uh, that uh, sustained Mammutus uh, Africanavus um, ended up being its downfall. It's a good question to ask. And, uh, and the other thing that I also wanted to bring up about this particular um, species, I think maybe that uh, while the fact uh, that we don't know a lot about it, Maybe quite a bit unfortunate due to the poor preservation amount of the specimens. Well, hardly any really. Uh, it's worth noting that at least it opens up the idea of how far back we know the mammoths dated. Yeah. Yeah. So at the moment, if you correct, if what you said is correct, which I believe it is, uh, uh, that uh, this 
kind of was the very first representative of the genus as a whole. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And uh, I think this is, uh, I think early Pliocene or late Miocene. Could be wrong, but uh, this guy was definitely the first. It wasn't too large, but uh, quite, quite. Uh, it was still uh, large enough where you'd say like that's that's a pretty big elephant but when you compare it to something like Mammutus trugonferi and some planning fronts uh, or I Mammutus think... colombi yeah. yeah 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 I think it, it still comes on, on a bit short but uh, I think this guy would have been around uh, mm, 3 million years ago 3 million years ago I, I, if, if I remember correctly 3 uh, 3 4 uh, two million years ago. Okay, so I mean, obviously. But, uh, then the question is also, how long did it stick around for? Yeah, that was that was my next point actually. Yeah, how long would it uh, stick around for? Because we only know one specimen, so it's uh, the more specimens yeah. you have, the, generally, especially if they happen to date from different times, that's when you can tell that mm -hmm. the specific species or genus, how far you know it would have extended its uh, existence as a mm -hmm. whole. So, are yeah. you happy with this particular uh, so, yeah. species? Shall we move on to the final species before we do some more general conclusions and maybe some other things that you might want to get into? Well, the thing with uh, Mammutus African Alphas, I think what, uh, <laughs> what disappoints me is that there's just so little in the end. Uh, but I believe that this... Uh, uh, I, feel, I feel like... Uh, Knowing that mammoths went back this far is, is awesome. Um, but yeah, if, if this guy, uh, I think my closing statement is that, that uh, it's cool that this guy was the oldest, if not one of the oldest mammoths. Uh, um, it might have been preceded actually by subplanty fronts, but I think this guy was the earliest, earliest uh, we have. Because uh, if it was preceded like by mammoth subplanty fronts, which we have good material of, uh, and then after Southern Fronts came Mammoth's African Aphis, uh, I think it it would, would have been a it would be a bit less uh, uh, sad, a bit less saddening that we don't have too much. But uh, either way, both mammoths that we covered today, uh, to conclude it, I think it's awesome to uh, discuss uh, such monumental species in the evolution of mammoths and. Uh, Hopefully, find more. Hopefully, we'll find more material on them. Yeah, guys over there, if you can hear us, which probably you can't, but let's just hope we do. <laughs> just get back to digging. <laughs> get back to digging, man. We need more. We really need more. And no, we don't. We do not support, uh, you know, exploitation of labor of any kind. But yes, we we, we do encourage digging. <laughs> <laughs> If you want, I'll come and help. Yeah, yeah, no yeah that's it. Yes, sign me up too. You know, once I, <laughs> once I get my shit together a bit more, you know, I'm coming in it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, yeah, com yeah, I'm yeah. coming over in it. <laughs> <laughs> We're about to make history. <laughs> make history, baby. Yeah. <laughs> and then put it on the channel in the video. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You know, that would that would be a cool video. I'm, I'm not gonna lie. Yeah. Ever managed to like make a video about uh, us going out on the dick side? Uh, uh, that'd be dope. Yep. Well, one one day, one day, something like that. We'll try to organize it. See what happens. And uh, if we're lucky to find Hell something, yeah. that will be greater. But if we don't, at least we can just boast that we've been there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. I think maybe it's a good idea to start um, going to the next bit since um, we're also getting into the time uh, point where I think even internet uh, because of the weather unfortunately right now in England it's uh, going yeah, a bit yeah. worse no, and it's yeah. lagging I, I so know exactly what you mean let's get exactly into the next mean, one. I have friends over in the UK where the weather sometimes interferes with our calls and that's the only problem because it started off really much better but I think hopefully it's not going to be too bad in terms yeah. of the overall quality but uh, as far mm -hmm. as I know we are okay so far <laughs> which is why I want to take our opportunity to make yeah. sure we get it out there quickly so 
Let's uh, yeah. go to the final species on our list, which is the Elephas ecorensis, which is the one you've mentioned earlier on as well. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So when you were talking about Paleoloxan Reki, uh, uh, as I said, it was originally known as Elephas Reki, and then this guy, Elephas ecorensis, uh, was said to be a direct send of it. But now uh, it's probably... Because it would make sense for sorry, sorry, hang on, hang on, hang to, on. Uh, two seconds, two seconds. I uh, just wanted to ask you uh, if you could repeat what you said because you got completely cut off because of the lag. Just wanted you to repeat the last oh. part when you said like because no and there was something that just got completely blank. Sorry, please. No worries, I'll, I'll repeat. Uh, but yeah, uh, so originally Paleolox and Reki was known as Elephas Reki, and. Uh, it was said that Elephas Reki gave rise to Elephas Ecorensis, but now that we know that Elephas Reki is Paleoxon Reki, it is more likely that Elephas uh, Ecorensis would be Paleoxon Ecorensis. Uh, um, but, but if that's not the case, then, and if it is just Elephas Ecorensis, that means that it is not a descendant of Paleoxon Reki. But what I I think is uh, what should be noted about this uh, species. I think it's this species. There were many species of elephants in uh, in Africa at the time. Um, if, but if I'm incorrect, someone please feel free to correct me. But I think it was this species that was the last uh, of the elephants in Africa, uh, where they eventually just could compete with the uh, with the rise of Paleoxodon and the uh, Loxodonta. These guys were just to a uh, to specialize in grasses at the time, at least. Um, so they just got outcompeted and eventually also uh, uh, died out. And you know, like I think I've said this with uh, <laughs> with uh, most of the uh, elephants we discussed uh, today. Sorry, can you don't I just keep? Can we pause for a second, just a moment? Yeah, sorry, that was a brief pause. I just needed to quickly um, uh, get away from a computer. But anyway, sorry. Um, continue, please, with your uh, uh, yeah. point on the Elephas uh, Echorensis. Echorensis. So, um, I believe it was either this species or it was Elephas Iolensis, I think the species name was. That was the last of the uh, Elephas genus in, in Africa. That eventually got outcompeted by uh, the uh, Loxodont uh, and Mammothus and, Lox and uh, Paleoloxodon. But uh, I was saying how uh, uh, I feel like I said this with most elephants we've discussed today that um, they seem to get outcompeted by Loxodont uh, like every single time. Um, but yeah, Loxodont it goes without saying that it's the only one we have in Africa at the moment, two species. So that one is king of the uh, African plains and jungle in the case of Loxodonta cyclotis. But uh, Elephas ecorensis, um, it's, it's a bit uh, vague for me because I am not too well first on Elephas in Af Africa. Um, but I know that there were multiple species at the time. I know from the top of my head, I know Elephas ecorensis and Iolensis. Um, and, and they are in both, they, they both are in some way related to Reki, they lost Reki. At least it was said that they were. So they could be considered Paleoxodon on Echorensis and Iolensis, respectively. Uh, um, but it was either one of those that ended up being a descendant of Reki and dying off in Africa, or like, like I mentioned when we we're talking our about Paleoxodon Reki, that one of those gave rise to uh, Paleoxodon Anticus and Amanicus When you asked your question. Right, yeah, so basically this uh, is where we kind of uh, bring it full circle to the point of how important it was to distinguish uh, whether or not uh, Paleoloxodon Reki was uh, actually yeah. Paleoloxodon Reki or whether it was uh, Elephas Reki, because that kind of changes the entire picture of everything in exactly. that particular line, in exactly. things to follow in as well. As well. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, statistics and phylogenetics and taxonomy and when it comes to pro proboscadians is very unstable and it's constantly being revised. So. What do you mean they are worse than compsognathids? Uh, you know what? <laughs> I'm willing to bet 
yes, maybe, but I know cops at Nafis aren't a treat either. <laughs> yeah, that's what because that, that's that is the reason why I brought them up. So yeah, <laughs> it's gonna be some people in the comments gonna be arguing like which one is more of a mess, <laughs> Pal or uh, cops at Nafis. <laughs> I always say, you know, the problem with Proboscideans is that in Africa they all just sort of get funky at some point. That's what it uh, comes down to. They all decided, like, hey, you know what? We all look like each other. Let's just start banging one another. And uh, that's how we get Paleolox and Anticus that looks to be more closely related to uh, Paleolox and Cyclotis, but not Africana and also not the Elephus we have today. So it's very confusing, but I think it just comes down. And then Mamufus as well, they ended up uh, breeding and uh, with uh, Elephus and Paleoloxodon, if I'm correct. So it is just, it just comes down to these elephants really like to get it on with each other. <laughs> it would be interesting though how much, how far the breeding can be possible, because um, you have to bear in mind uh, that this is another further confusing factor in this whole phylogeny. Because as an example, as far as I'm aware of, just to give you a good comparison, perhaps it's a good comparison, but some people might think it's a rubbish one, and feel free to let me know in the comments. Do you, do you think it's a fair comparison to say that? In contrast, uh, when you talk about different families like this, a lot of times, mm -hmm. uh, unless they like belong to one kind of family, for example, alligatorids, probably were and cro 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 crocodile that they would be uh, competing within their own family sorry uh, breeding likely in yeah. or interbreeding if they were pushed to do so within their own families but not outside so for example a crocodile would not be able to breed with some kind of alligator it together yeah. they, they would not be compatible genetically so they would just not uh -huh. produce anything yeah and they wouldn't even probably even try but um, so let's say uh, caimans of species, different species, are theoretically they're possible to breed with one another, I think, I would assume. Mm -hmm. Even though I don't know if they generally are driven to that or not, but uh, I do know that there are hybrids of crocodiles that exist, so under certain circumstances we know that different crocodiles do breed with one another. So, yeah. different basically, you know, uh, species of crocodilus, as far as I'm aware of, I think they would be possible to breed with one another. Mm -hmm. so well, yeah that's uh, one thing that well, may be worth considering whether or not something like an elephus you know elef could elephus breed with paleoloxodon because they're technically well different it's taxa. very interesting that you brought, uh, brought it up because we actually do have evidence that modern day loxodonta breeding with elephus uh, they made oh, wow. the hybrid, yeah, but uh, unfortunately that, that calf did die, uh, I think a, a week or two after, uh, afterwards, after it was uh, born. Uh, there was a hybrid of a Loxodonta and a Elephus, a live named Mati. Uh, I'm not sure if there is a picture of him, I'll look it up for you, but it was fascinating that this happened once. And um, I, don't ask me how. <laughs> <laughs> by the way, but uh, I did stumble upon a video on YouTube of a African bull elephant mating with an Asian elephant. So, uh, if that did end up being successful in the next two years, we'll, we could be seeing another hybrid. I wonder if that so, hybrid, however, would be viable for further reproduction, because um, yeah, the thing that we understand as well, we do have hybrids, like say, of lions and tigers, which are basically mm -hmm. ligers, but I believe they are sterile. Yeah, yeah, a lot of the time that is the case, but... Uh, as in, like, they do not they allow do you this. to further reproduce uh, yeah, down the line? Yeah, they can't, they can't further re reproduce, yeah. But uh, I'm not sure if you know about this mammoth, Mammutus jeffersoni, which is a species we once found in uh, Africa, uh, not Africa, America. Um, which we considered its own species for a while, but after looking uh, into the genetics, it turned out to be a mix of uh, Mammuthus primigenius, the woolly mammoth, and Mammuthus columbi, the Colombian mammoth. Yep. And they did make fertile offspring. Uh, oh, look at this. <laughs> I found the uh, video I mentioned. I found a thumbnail for it, but uh, there it is. So elephants, they do do this. Uh, they do breed and mate with uh, 
other exa within the uh, group uh, uh, elephant today. So, but whether your question that's a good question, whether they are able to produce fertile offspring, is uh, that I do not know. But I think it is the case that uh, with uh, Mammuthus, Primogenius, and Columbi, that they were able to produce fertile. Uh, Fertile uh, offspring, but then again, those are the same. Ah, genus. By the way, uh, kids, uh, you, kids, if you're watching this, don't uh, try this at home. Like, don't, don't, no. do, like, avert your eyes. Basically, that's what I'm trying to <laughs> yeah. say. I'm sorry, it's been a while. Yeah, close so, your eyes. Cover your, <laughs> eyes. Cover your eyes. Yeah, I should have said that. But uh, <laughs> yeah, that's that's just evidence uh, and living proof that this happened. Basically, sorry. Carry on. <laughs> it does happen. Yeah, it happens. Uh, so, but it is a good question whether these animals were able to produce fertile offspring. But you know, it it I, I I'm guessing yes because if not, then we must have gotten insanely lucky to fi find the um, the uh, genetic data that we fi found in uh, Paleoloxodontus that showed that it had this much percentage of Loxodontocyclotus and this much of Mammuthus in it and this much of Loxodonta africana and elephants. And Luxodonta, uh, not Luxodonta, yeah, and Luxodonta cyclote is coming up uh, on top. So it is, it is a mess. It truly is a mess. <laughs> the whole elephant family tree is a complete mess. Um, it is, it's constantly getting revised, constantly. Cool. Right. So, I, uh, I would say that that's a very interesting. Uh, line of coverage that we have done so far on these uh, uh, very underrated, uh, if I may say so, different animals of the Caribbean and uh, African descent. So I thought we would switch yeah. our attention now I to agree. this paper that you have sent me the link into. Yeah. The dietary resource partitioning so, among three co- uh, you, you know what I mean. Co yeah, 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 this one. Yeah. Text. yeah. So this is what I was talking about earlier, how certain elephants did coexist with one another in uh, Africa and competed. And this is between a species of Oxidanta, which uh, I couldn't really pronounce the uh, species name of. I think it's Kuki, but it, it sounds funny, so I wasn't entirely sure. <laughs> and then you have Mammuthus of okay. which is uh, one of the earliest, if not the earliest. I think it's gonna be Kuke. Depends, of course, on okay, or right. Kuke. Yeah, it depends because uh, it sounds very Japanese, to be honest. But uh, mm -hmm. because of the ending, yeah. but um, in Japanese, it will probably be Kuke, Kuke, or something like that. Yeah. But I don't. Yeah. So I, I it's that that this is uh, what is it? Um, South Africa. Okay. Yeah. So it's a South yeah. Africa model. South, South, South Africa. Yeah. South Africa. Yeah. And uh, you know me being uh, living in the Netherlands and you know speaking Dutch. If I were to say it in a Dutch way, I would say "koke" as well. Oh. So, okay. Um, but it's 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 difficult. <laughs> it's a very odd species name. But we got looks at the "koke," Mammuthus soplaniflorus, and Ananchus capensis. I'll zoom in to the abstract. Uh, Ananchus so that is a can very interesting elephant. Uh, yeah. So the cool thing about Ananchus is it's uh, it's got very uh, straight tusks. It's it's got very very straight tusks. Not like you know uh, how Paleoloxodon is sometimes for just a straight tusked elephant, but Ananchus has got very very weirdly straight tusks. <laughs> um, but it's cool. And these three Proboscideans, uh, all, all elephants, they coexist with one another, and. Uh, I mentioned it briefly earlier. Um, uh, how uh, Ananchus was more of a browser; it more so browsed. Uh, and uh, here's an interesting picture. If you scroll down, our scene in the paper, you can see the uh, you can see Ananchus subplaniflorus and Oxodonta. You can uh, see uh, a diagram of them and their molars. Right. Let's. Uh... Uh, Go back to that. I've had it just a moment ago. There we go. Yeah. So if you scroll down to their molars, you can see how they differ. And Ananchus has these has this very bumpy and these nipple-like ridges in its molar, which is 
perfect for browsing. And then you go to the soft landing fronts, which has uh, all these flat ridges and has a few more. And then same with Luxodonta. If you look close to Luxodonta and the uh, Mamufus planning fronts, they have very similar motors, which are more favorable uh, for grazing. Um, and they would uh, be they would find them more in the open grasslands as compared to Anantis in the in the forested areas. Uh, whether this is because Anantis just couldn't compete with Luxodonta and Mamufus of fronts in grazing areas, I'm not entirely sure, but I, I think that's probably the case. But uh, I, I think they just Anantis just wasn't capable of eating grass that well as the uh, two other elephants and eventually it died off while uh, Mamufus and Luxanta continued on and uh, eventually Mamufus also died out and moved to uh, Eurasia and Luxanta r remained supreme in Africa but it, it's, it, that's interesting to me this whole paper that it went into how these two animals uh, three, three animals uh, coexisted in the same formation uh, they were all drinking the same water, living in the same general area, but eating different things um, to avoid competition for the most part. But Luxodonta and Mamufus were a bit more generalized than the uh, specialized Anancus capensis, which would only eat that browsy material. Seems to be one thing that is consistently common throughout the history of animal world on this planet is that uh, whenever something is very narrowly specialized and tends to really be its uh, both its um, area where it shines at but at the same time eventually when uh -huh. something changes it becomes its downfall exactly. it's, it, it's it's like it's both yep. what it what they are known for and what they are kind of famed for and probably what they excel at to the best in terms of the fellow competi competition in comparison of course but that's also at the same time was their own Achilles heel in the long term perspective. Exactly. For that, that, that's exactly right. And elephants, unfortunately, were very uh, vulnerable to climate change. Like, they eventually just started dropping like flies to the point where you had a handful of them left. And Luxodonta was it's, like, it, it's my favorite uh, elephant. And I think it's fascinating how it has survived for so long since the early Pliocene as a, as a genus and it has uh, weathered out so many changes in its climate and it's so generalized um, but near, near the end of Pliocene it still had Luxodonta, you had Elephus and you had Mamufus I think Paleoloxodon was around uh, in some places but not the big guys, Mamanacus was already extinct Anticus as well if I'm correct you still had the smaller species living on islands and stuff so you had only like a handful of like elephants left because climate change and human for hunting was just too, too much pressure for these animals um but yeah the uh, specialized they uh, animals they were the first to go oh they were just the first to go and the, when climate uh, changed uh, elephants were just pushed to the to the end uh, to the limits and then humans just tipped them over that edge edge in uh, most cases unfortunately yeah well com competition when uh, it comes to animal think... world and uh, in in certain time periods and contexts uh, i yeah. mean to be honest i'm because it's yeah. uh, it, it's potentially a dangerous territory of getting too philosophical rather than just going by the factual history of nature but i will just make a quick one here to say that uh natural selection uh, does not know mercy and humans just like everything else is a no, product of natural selection true it's true, it's true. It, you know, even if it is somewhat philosophical, evolution, biology, uh, and the natural selection, it, it keeps moving, time keeps moving, and you either adapt to it or you uh, you become extinct. Uh, and unfortunately, that was the case for Anankas. Yeah, that's that's what makes it very fascinating because um, I'm pretty sure if we are going, if we were to spend longer time to just simply do a dedicated uh, segment to where similar things existed, say 
both in Mesozoic, if possible, to verify, and uh, in other time periods with similar kind of big game kind of megafauna, right? Where we're talking about pretty big animals overall yeah. in the environment. Then um, we would find some interesting parallels there as well in terms of how they, what sort of dietary preferences they had and how they would have been able to coexist uh, and what could have been potentially the cause of their demise uh, whenever it mm -hmm. came. And of course, the further back mm -hmm. you go, I suppose, the more difficult it becomes to determine. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. But uh, it's uh, it's good to uh, have history and the paleontology there to show us that the as time marches on, you know, species either adapt or they falter and I think it's something we can uh, microphone on your side is lagging again oh yeah it's uh, just one of those things I guess it's because it's a uh, long recording and weather so guys again yeah apologies it's a very kind apologies. of yeah. homemade straight to the upload no editing nothing it's We're... very raw very rough with the chauffeur here yeah we, we like it rough baby yeah yeah keep it real, <laughs> keeping it real. Yeah, yeah yeah i like that i like your take on it better we're keeping it real <laughs> it real we love to keep it real on this channel so yeah um i wanted to ask you if there's anything else that you would like to bring up uh in terms of this particular study and things that you particularly found interesting well, I found it interesting that there was a study that went into this uh, uh, so well, how these uh, three elephant species uh, uh, coexist uh, with each other and how uh, one would die off and one was just not as specialized, one, not generalized, I guess, in this case, as the others to uh, adapt to changes. I think it's uh, I, think, I think it's fascinating i think it's truly fascinating and, and it, I, I learned a lot from it uh, i learned about this species of floxodonta that i didn't even know existed uh, so that's really cool that's really cool and it motivates me to learn more about uh, something like ananchus because it's a genus that i mostly know by name and not much else about it but uh, yeah uh, I, I hope other people that watch this find this study as interesting as I do, because I think it's truly fascinating. Well, at the end of the day, uh, we can share it via link, and uh, yeah. uh, or if not, uh, feel free to hit me up on my on Discord server. Well, I mean, on the ch oh, yeah. on our channel, uh, because I mean, it's at this point, uh, my even though it's technically my channel, but because of the moderators regularly appearing it's like we're calling it our our channel because of the way that we hang out there it kind of it's yeah. like our thing now so <laughs> it's, it's quite interesting how this kind of became it's a thing nice to share um, yeah definitely but yeah so but yeah but if you do join the discord uh, hit up one of us and we'll uh, we'll be happy to uh share some more info and hopefully you can share some info with us absolutely and uh is there anything else you would like to add to this session of the uh, to celebrate the Caribbean and uh, African History Month, and in, in this context well, in particular? I think uh, all I gotta say is this was very fun. <laughs> it was very fun to talk about and truly really fascinating, and I learned a lot. Uh, thank you again for having me on this because this was awesome. Well, I hope you're happy, uh, and uh, I suppose as a uh, Car Caribbean yourself, you would probably uh, be <laughs> quite easily hooked to get into further details into all of yes, these different certainly. things that we certainly. would not be able to cover just for because it's just getting very <laughs> long. Exactly, yeah. Uh, I, I enjoyed it. And, uh, you know, I think despite us having talked about elephants, you know, uh, and I think that's you know one of my favorite segments we talked about today, I think one of the more interesting ones was about the ground sloths in the Caribbean, and there's potentially one in that was found in Curaçao. So, again, if someone has more info on that, let me know. That's yeah, I would be interested to find out more about that one in Curaçao and maybe other areas of the Caribbean Sea yeah, where you find certainly. something. Yeah. 
So what was your favorite uh, part about this? Me, uh, I had a legit, uh, genuine laugh when we were discussing the uh, Dinopithecus. Like your yeah. <laughs> your genuine terror and thinking that you would have a better, more fun time being around T Rex than the Dinopithecus <laughs> just legitimately entertained my brain. <laughs> It's just we, we, we don't know. Like I, I've seen a baboon, I haven't seen a giant uh, upright uh, deaf crocodile. <laughs> yeah. But I've seen uh, murderous baboons. <laughs> I'm almost um, kind of tempted to uh, say that this could be the next potential meme on this channel, just uh, for other people <laughs> who are going to be coming on and occasionally just reminding you specifically whether you're here or not at the time. <laughs> just the f of the fact that you are more terrified of a baboon on steroids that, <laughs> than you are of a freaking T-Rex. <laughs> if we ever get uh, to see uh, in any shape or form a, a T-Rex uh, in its pure raw power and terrifyingness. Maybe I'll reconsider. <laughs> uh, right now it's just up to my imagination as to how terrifying T-Rex could be. Uh, That's true, while still yeah. terrifying, yeah, I, I have a modern day reference, unfortunately, with baboons. <laughs> <laughs> That's true, it's not like, uh, I mean, of course Jeffrey would probably pop in here and say, but guys, don't you know, dinosaurs descended from dragons. Right? Oh yeah. <laughs> so, but uh, yeah. so you gotta know what they look like in it, bro. Yeah. But, <laughs> but yeah, um, I uh, wanted to ask you once again if there is anything else you wanted to do. Maybe you do you want to conclude this now, or do you want to bring up something else and uh, maybe something last minute, if you will. Uh, I think uh, we covered everything. Uh, I think. Uh, one nice conclusion to draw from this is that uh, African Caribbean prehistoric fauna is dope as fuck. <laughs> and that's considering we just haven't been able to cover obviously the classics since yeah. um, we decided to obviously to go for the underdogs, if you will. Yeah, it goes to show that even the lesser known animals are amazing and fascinating. Well, awesome sauce. I'm happy that you were able to come today and uh, I want to thank you for uh, giving me the chance to uh, celebrate uh, the African and Caribbean History Month on this session and uh, hey, we'll be man. definitely doing more of this if this audience who is watching this enjoys this kind of thematic sort of yeah. stuff. Yeah, like, uh, thank you for having me, man. This is, this is awesome. Awesome. No worries, no worries. I mean, uh, maybe we'll do some stuff related to the Chinese uh, when the Chinese New Year happens. Oh, oh that's cool. Oh, man, that, that, that's That, that could that's be a awesome. very interesting one to do. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Let us know in the comments, guys, if you wanna do, want us to do a Chinese New Year special, perhaps. Yeah. Please let us know, because uh, and maybe we can get Jeffrey involved, uh, involved as well. Yeah, maybe we can find someone... Uh, if I'm lucky, I don't want to say it because I don't know how it's gonna go because you never predict how because I don't want to promise something and then if I'm unable to deliver then people will be disappointed but yeah, exactly. maybe yeah. we can get somebody from the field who is uh, maybe from China or from Hong Kong or in the field who yeah. comes from that cultural background and uh, get and who specifically works in paleontology field to come as a guest to celebrate the Chinese New Year special I think one. that would be awesome. That, that would, would be, be awesome. the, that would be. Let's just say that would be the perfect ideal way. Yeah. But if we cannot make yeah. it, if that's not possible, then we will do something anyway. Let's just say that. Yeah. Okay. Now, and you also mentioned that February might be another uh, time when they're yeah. gonna be when we're gonna be potentially coming back to the Caribbean and African culture history yeah, celebration, exactly. right? So, we'll have another round at least uh, before we call it a wrap and then besides it's gonna repeat every year anyway so why would we even so, yeah. why would we ever wrap it up right so exactly yeah we're gonna keep it going just gonna keep it going, going in it we've got yeah. get more people on as well next time exactly exactly and the more the merrier and the more the merrier exactly so long as it doesn't lag of course yeah <laughs> <laughs> all right well uh, thanks for coming to this uh, and uh, ladies and gentlemen um 
If you have enjoyed this podcast, uh, please make sure you leave us a like, comment to help the algorithm, and uh, subscribe to this channel if you're new. Leave us requests if you would like to see more of this kind of, uh, you know, culturally rooted uh, theme specials. Uh, that, as you yeah. have seen now, we managed to tie to paleontology, uh, which can be done, you know, correctly, and uh, we will be happy to oblige. If it's within our power and scope and interest to do, definitely, we can yeah. work something out. Yeah, 100%. And in the meantime, I'm gonna call this one, this session, a wrap, and uh, hope to see you guys again soon, and we're gonna be ending this exactly. right now. Take care, everybody, and uh, I'll speak to you later. All right. Take care, everyone. Ciao, Bye -bye. ciao. I have a good night today.